And then when you think about what your brain and electrical cords have in common, it's insulation. So there's a myelin sheath that's created um, around the nerve cells in the brain, and it's really important, just like when you plug in your plug, you've got the, the sheath around the plug to keep the electrical charges going from your wall to whatever appliance you're using. Same thing with the brain. The insulation, that myelin sheath, keeps the neurons going with the messages tracking from neuron to neuron instead of dissipating. And 70% of that myelin sheath is fat. Dietary fats are important uh, for a number of, of issues in the body. They provide structures for all the cell membranes. They're used for that insulating layer around the nerve cells in the brain. They're also very important for the hormones of the body, the chemical messengers, an important fuel for muscles. And they're also important in transporting the fat-soluble vitamins A, D, E, and K. Essential fatty acids really are essential, and a lot of times fats have a kind of a bad rap in our society now, um, but it is very critical for adolescents that they have sufficient fatty acid intake. Uh, it's particularly omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids that are important, and when you have a deficiency in these, you can see a slowing of brain function, can actually get shrinkage of the brain tissue, dry skin, hair loss, skin rashes, and growth retardation. This is one of the scarier changes that I see with eating disorders. On the left side, it's a normal brain, and it's a normal density of the brain tissue. There's a very rich architecture of the connections between the neurons there. And on the right side is an individual that's become significantly malnourished. And you actually have loss of the thinking part of the brain, and it's replaced then by fluid. So the, the white part is kind of the good part, the thinking part of the brain, and the dark part is fluid-filled areas. And so you see on the right, there's much more fluid-filled areas. There's loss of some of the neuronal connections. And it's really unclear whether all of these changes are fully re re reversible, even with appropriate nutritional intake. Some of the cognitive changes that we see is sort of slowed thinking, stuck thinking, kind of hamster wheel. People are sort of stuck in their thoughts. You can get a lot of rumination and obsessions and distortions, difficulty with basic decision making and some short-term memory loss, as well as the distortion and self-assessment of weight and shape. And we kind of view it as an eclipsing of the self by the eating disorder. You lose the person that you once knew, and it seems to have been taken over by the eating disorder instead. There can be a real snowball effect to the medical complications that we see with eating disorders. What can start off as a very innocuous thing that we might be actually really excited about when our kids cut back on soda pop and candy, uh, we're, we're excited about that. But then if it becomes more and more restrictive over time and there's fewer foods that seem safe and healthy, that can become an eating disorder. And what we see oftentimes is a very rapid acceleration of the weight loss. The more weight uh, that's lost within a short period of time, the more likely you are to have significant vital sign changes in an individual. Early intervention is really critical to ensure a full and complete recovery. I think it's hard a lot of times as parents or friends or even as physicians if you've known a child for a long time to think of that, that possibly might be an eating disorder that you're dealing with. Uh, but remain open to that. Denial is really the eating disorder's best friend. You need to keep an open mind about it as a possible diagnosis. And if you're suspicious, seek early and complete evaluation by individuals that really know eating disorders. Sometimes we've had people that have actually been evaluated, but it hasn't been by somebody that's really tuned into the issues and they've been missed for a longer time than needed. So find somebody who's really knowledgeable as a medical doctor, as a therapist, and also as a dietitian to do the assessment. And really make sure that there's close medical follow-up to ensure full recovery. Thank you.